we come into your presence with the blood of Jesus. We also come as New Testament priests bearing the holy incense of worship and thanksgiving. Have your way this morning, Lord. Let your kingdom come, cause your purpose and your will to be executed to precision. Let the mantle of priesthood, the garments of priesthood rest upon all of us. Not only those that are singing and ministering and praying, but every man and woman that is here. Open the mysteries of your kingdom to us this morning. Everybody pray in the spirit. Stop looking. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. We're going to swim deep into the ocean. If you don't know how to pray in the spirit, you won't survive in the water. That's the only swimming equipment. They are the navigation equipment God gave the church. You don't do it in the flesh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands again. Some major things are going to shift here. I'm here on a prophetic mission. Major, 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 major shifts. Major, 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 major shifts are going to happen here. But there is a navigation equipment. If you want to soar into the higher realms of God. There is a navigation equipment. If you want to move in the deep. It's praying in the spirit. It's praying in the spirit. The reason you operate in the surface is that you don't do that. And if you do, you don't stay long in it. Learn to do that one hour. Then you will start seeing mysteries. The reason you are a surface person, a carnal person, you are powerless, is that you don't practice it. The reason you are doing without victory, you are suffering defeat, is you are not practicing this. You are not practicing this. You are not practicing this. There are deep things that God laid for his children. You are not practicing this. And those that do just do a few minutes talk. And so you are not able to soar where egos fly. You are not able to go into the deep. Where the treasures of the kingdoms are. Lift up your hands one more time. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. In Jesus mighty name. There is something an aircraft does when it hits turbulence. When you are flying. You hit turbulence. You don't go down. You don't stay there. You go higher. If your Christian life, if your financial life, if your marriage life, if your business life has hit some turbulence, it's time to ascend higher. It's time to ascend higher. It's time to ascend higher. When you now ascend higher than the waves, the clouds, then you stabilize. Everyone say ascend, ascend. and stabilize. Ascend. Say it again. Ascend, ascend. and stabilize. Ascend. Everyone say it one more time. Ascend, ascend. and stabilize. So you ascend with praying in tongues, with praying in the spirit. You stabilize with worship. And sometimes worship leaders are not making headway. You come on, that day is different. Something is wrong. You are not making headway. Ascend first. Then you can cruise. The cruising is what we mean stabilizing. Ascend first. It's praying in the spirit. The most deadly worship leaders are the ones who are intercessors. You pray in the spirit as you sing. You pray in the spirit. You get the people to pray in the spirit. You get the people to pray in the spirit. The aircraft takes off, takes off, takes off. It rises above all the turbulence, all the clouds, all the storms. Then it will start cruising. At that moment, worship becomes heavenly. A lot of people don't know this and that's why they are not able to. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they fail. All this sometimes success, sometimes failure ends today in your life. There is a way to have consistent success. There is a way to have consistent victory. There is a way to have consistent... Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? 
Say it again, ascend. ascend. And stabilize. And stabilize. How do you ascend? Praying in the spirit. Watch the ego, what it does when there is storm. That's why the ego has advantage over all the birds. It ascends. It rides with, until it rises above all of it. Then it starts cruising. It doesn't flap. Because that's why the other birds need to perch every now and then. You need to perch on tree, perch on your roof. Because they flap, so they get tired. But the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord, people that know how to pray, will mount up with wings like eagle. They don't flap. That's why they don't get tired. He said they shall run and not be tired. They will fly and they will not faint. I'm adding that. Put it up. Let them see it. Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord. There is a technology of the eagle. It's the same technology that you use in the aircraft. If you stay where the red crowds are, the aircraft will be turbulent and sometimes thunder can knock it down. When you are sent, there is no thunder above the clouds. All this thunder and lightning exists inside the clouds. And there are the things that cause people to, to crash. The turbulence of the storm exists in the cloud. And it's just a little above us here. Ascend beyond it. You see all the turbulence of life, marital turbulence, attacking your health, attacking your finances. It's just here. They call them the prince of the power of the air. So rise where those forces are not operating. Rise above them. You are seated at the right hand of the heavenly places. In Far above. That's where your flight can fly to. That's where you can operate. Rise above them. There are small birds that like to attack eagles. They are small. Though. They perch on the back of the eagle and start pecking on it. It gets so discomfortable that sometimes an eagle can fall. And this, this thing will come in the front so that they will fight. The eagle will kill it. It perches on his back. The guy is flying. The thing is biting it at the back. So the eagle has a solution for that. They don't turn and start disturbing it because you can fall off. You know what they do? They climb higher. They climb higher. They climb higher. When they hit an altitude, that bed chokes and falls off. Did you hear what I'm just saying? The, that bed can't survive high altitude. They get dizzy. Sometimes they pass out and go into coma and pass out and fall. Some of them have died. They can't go high. That's one thing. Now, mountain climbers can tell you this. When you get home, Google it. Those who climb high altitude mountains like Mount Everest, they tell you there's what is called the snake line. The snake line. There's an altitude you reach. No snake can survive. You see, living on the lower plane, on the lower dimension, is why demons are having access to your life. They climb, you get to a height, all snakes that reaches their dies off. Anything beyond that is snake free. I climbed a peak on, uh, on, on Obudukato Ranch. And I was asking them, this kind, all this stuff. Why don't you people have snake? He said, these ones that are high, no snake can exist there. Because they are higher than the snake altitude. The lower hills, snakes live there. This is why believers are being attacked, are facing all this. Everyone say, ascend, ascend. and stabilize. No, 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 you're not, you're not talking, you're not talking. You need to speak it so that it can code. That's how you program yourself. You speak yourself to talk. Say, I ascend, I ascend. and then I can cruise. You cruise in success. You cruise in victory. That's how we do it. That's how to live in dominion. That's how to live in dominion. Christianity is a supernatural life. It's not a natural life. We have a supernatural advantage. And he is the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave us. And we are not tapping his resources. We are just operating like ordinary men. Charm can affect you. Witches can bite you. Who told you? Today is the last day those things happen in your life. I said today is the last day those things happen in your life. Because when you now ascend, I will show you what you find there. Treasures. That are not available on the surface. You, you don't mind diamond on the surface. Neither do you mind gold on the surface. I'm going to show you how to assess those things. 
Somebody say ascend. ascend. And stabilize. And stabilize. Say from now, now. I operate, I operate. At, the at the cruising level. It's a new dimension for me. No more defeats. No more defeats. No more epileptic power. Like Nigerian power authorities. But steady supply of power. Steady cruising. Steady victory. Moving from one realm of glory to another realm of glory. The Bible said the part of a righteous man is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter until that perfect day. Not sometimes they take light. Not sometimes you take five steps forward, then you take ten backward. That type of Christianity ends today in your life. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, Pastor up towards the end, then let's get all the pastors and ask those who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit to come and so that we can lay hands on them. Let them start speaking in tongues because they don't have aircraft engine until they get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They only have car engine, natural man's engine. You operate as a natural man. You don't have aircraft engine until you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can only drive on the ground. That's why there's too many traffic in your life and roadblocks. All of us are going to be elevated into a new dimension of glory. Your Christian life will take on a new turn. Then other aspects of your life will take on a new turn. <laughs> I worship you. You are who you are. You are the great I am. I am. Before you sit, you are in a school of piloting now. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 said that when Jesus died, he redeemed you and I from our sins. And when he died, rose again from the dead, he raised us up together and made us to sit together. The reason they use the word together is where he sits is where we sit. He made us to sit together with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, because there are three heavens, you need to know which one he's talking about. He specified that where we sit is where Christ sits. Our position in the heavenlies is in Christ Jesus, exactly where Jesus is seated. But if there is a doubt, you don't know where Jesus is seated, chapter 1 will explain it to you. Verse 19 and 20 and 21, the Bible said, when God raised him up, uh, okay, what is the exceeding greatness of, greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So, he's still talking about this resurrection and ascension. Notice that the other one I, I read was about resurrection and ascension. Okay. When he raised him from the dead and sat him at his own right hand. Where? in the heaven. So the heavenly places he was talking about in chapter 2 verse 6 is the right hand of God. It's just beside God's throne. That's that place that Lucifer wanted and he fell because he wanted to get it by rebellion. Rebellion. Okay. So we're not going to teach you now how to operate from there. Nobody who operates from that realm 
ever gets defeated. Aircraft belong to the skies. Eagles belong to the skies. If you find an eagle walking around in the street, ah, children will use it to play football. If you find eagles walking around in the street, then snake and cobras can kill it. Do you know how eagles kill snakes? The greatest enemy of snakes are eagles. They just come pick them and they have only one thing. The snake will be struggling, the eagle will be sorry. The snake will be struggling, the eagle will be sorry. The snake will be struggling, the eagle will be sorry. There is a place the eagle gets to, the snake passes out. Then he will take it to the next and turn it to food for his children, for his chickens, for the eaglets. If they stay on that low, low plane fighting, then cobra can kill it. That's what a lot of believers are doing. This revelation in chapter 1 of where we all prayed from, Revelation in chapter 2 is what Paul established first before he now went to chapter 6 to tell us that we wrestle against flesh, against principalities and powers. If you don't know where you are operating from and then you think wrestling with principalities and powers means warfare at the same level, you will become a victim. That's when demons affect believers. If an ego descends to that level, So, we're going to learn the four technology involved in spiritual navigation. I, I, I like the fact that you guys have four. So, that makes my job easier. There are four technology involved. The first is igniting the engine. Everyone say ignition. Do your hand like you are starting your car. I hope you know some are done with keys. You do, zzz, 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 the car starts. How many of you know that? Uh -huh. And some are done by touching the button. You know, modern cars, you don't, you just touch the stuff and the car starts. Everyone say ignition. So say, tell your friend, ignite. ignite. Say ignite. ignite. Because you can't fly an aircraft that is not started. Until that engine is turned on, gravity has dominion over it. Same will be dominating you. Demonic powers will be dominating you. Circumstances of love, life will be dominating you because you are living in the realm of gravity, in the realm of the flesh. So say it again, I ignite. I ignite. How do you do it? Father, we come into your presence with the blood of Jesus. Say it. Another way we do it, I cleanse myself with the blood of Jesus. Everyone say that. The things that stop your, you from operating in the supernatural is the blood. The cross is the starting point of supernatural work. The cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. The fuel you feed into this aircraft that flies is the word, the word, the word. So it's like I'm... Um, Fueling your vehicles now. I'm sure you've seen some of these vehicles. You are trying to start it. It's not catching. Eh? Something is wrong with the ignition. Eh? The blood is what eliminates all that and turns your engine on. So two dimensions we're going to do now. Number one, everyone lift up your hand. Say, Lord. I cleanse myself with the blood of Jesus. Father, I cleanse my spirit, my soul, my mind, my body with the blood of Jesus. And Father, I enter into your holy presence with the blood of Jesus. Do you see what gives us access? He said, we have boldness to enter. That, what is he talking about? That place where Jesus is seated. That place where he's seated is the holiest of holies. 
Say, Lord, I assess the heavenlies and I soar into your presence with the blood of Jesus. Technology number one, mastered. You come to lead worship, you're struggling. This is what you must do. You come to preach, you are struggling. This is what you must do. They call you to pray for somebody that is sick. You are struggling. This is what you must do. Your faith engine, once turned on, will move every mountain. There are forces that ground faith. There is one power that unlocks the power of your faith. is the cross. It destroys all of those things. There are cases where people have made mistakes and they will keep them grounded until they do the needful, what I just taught you. Leave those hands. Let's try it one more time. Because <laughs> forgetting these things are very detrimental. Leave those hands one more time. Say, Father, Father I, cleanse I cleanse myself. Spirit, Spirit. Soul, soul, mind, mind and body. With the blood of Jesus. Then if I notice that I've stopped seeing, you don't see anymore. If you notice that you don't hear anymore. So it's hard for you to know the mind of God. You don't get direction where you want to make decision. Then you say, Lord. Say, Lord. Lord. I apply the blood of Jesus on my ears, on my eyes, and on my heart. I apply it on my ears. I apply it on my eyes. Apply it on my heart. Let the doors of revelation open. Let the doors of visions and revelation open. Let the doors of spiritual guidance open. The doors of divine direction open up. In the name of Jesus. Then there's another way we say it. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I enter into your presence. I soar into the heavenlies with the blood of Jesus. And when it comes to revelation, say, Father, I gain access into your wisdom, into revelation and wisdom by the blood of Jesus. Did somebody get technology number one? There are riches stored for you in Christ. The storehouse of heaven is overflowing with abundance. Believers are not making access. They are not downloading them. Many of them are not even making contact. The only thing that bank recognizes is the signature of Christ. If you bring the blood, the door opens. You know that the strong room of a bank has codes. It's not everybody that can open it now. Eh? Because they don't want the thing stored there to get missing. So God coded this thing. The enemy cannot assess it. Demonic powers cannot assess it. That's why he put your inheritance. When you bring the blood code and the name of Jesus code, that place opens up. I don't know how you locked your phone or what codes operate your bank account. But the blood of Jesus and his name grants you instant access. Everybody lift up your hands and bless God for it. This is technology number one, downloaded. And now, let's get into the manifestation, the operations, the operations, the operation. Because many believers are carrying matches, but they are looking for fire. What you are looking for is in your hand. All you need to do is pick one and do like this. Fire is there. You are looking for fire, but you are carrying matches. You are looking for fire, but you are carrying matches. Because somebody has explained to you that all you need to do is just do. Everyone says, Shh. Everyone says, do it like, Shh. Do it like you are scratching a match. Do it. Shh. And fire will come out. The fire you are looking for is in the matches you are carrying. This is how you manifest the resources of the kingdom. They are there already laid in account for you. But what about revealing them, manifesting them, converting them? So that you can begin to enter into your come into operation in your life. Hey! Technology number one, decoded. Technology number two is now in your mouth. This is now soaring. Engine is on. It's now time to fly. You see, when you turn your car on 
and engine is firing. There is something now called acceleration. Am I correct? You put on the move forward gear and start doing what? Everyone say accelerate. Say accelerate. That's for driving, but for aircraft, everyone say soar. Say move higher. Say accelerate. That is that, your tongue speaking in other tongues. The Old Testament people didn't have this technology. There was a limit to how far they could go. So God had to always send angels who know how to do the technology to come and get them in their low states. Now, the technology of angels are in our hands. We now are given the powers of the age to come. We now have it. That's when God gave us the Holy Ghost. You don't know the first New Testament man to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit was Jesus. It happened after John baptized him in water. What shape did the Holy Spirit take when he was coming upon him? He said he came upon him in form of what? A dove. He's telling you there is now a bed inside you. You can fly. You are not an ordinary man anymore. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? There is an ego living inside you. There is an ego. There is a snake eating power living inside you. Something that eat demons. Something that eat witches and wizards. It turns them to food. What you call principalities and power. This thing turns it to food. It turns it to food. I say it turns it to food. This thing that is inside you. It turns demons to food. It turns snakes to food. It turns demons to food. It turns witches and wizards to food. How can a witch bite an ego? How can you be afraid of demons? Talking about our master. Because everything first happens with him. So that we can learn who we are. He said that the father when he exalted him. At his right hand. He made him head over principalities and powers. The Bible says he made him lord over principalities and powers. Ephesians 1 said he placed him high, far above principalities and power. Exactly what he did to him and what he did to you. You are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. And everything he is is what he put in you. There is now an aircraft engine inside you. His name is the Holy Ghost. I say his name is the Holy Ghost. I say his name is the Holy Ghost. It is not a new engine to get. It's an engine that is already installed. When you open up your mouth and pray in the spirit, you turn that engine on and then the aircraft takes off. Let's lift up your hands and pray in the spirit. Technology number two, praying in the Holy Ghost. Technology after the cross, the next thing is Pentecost. After the cross, the next technology of the New Testament is Pentecost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 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 I worship I worship Amen, 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 amen. Did you notice that there is something about technology number two? Many a time when you start it, because there is climbing in it, you are dealing with gravity. You are letting go of the flesh to switch into the spirit. So that is where some people face that gravitational opposing force. You feel it some mornings. You get up, you wake up, you pray, you yawn. You do. Don't worry, just keep firing. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. The rockets go so far that there is no more gravity. 
aircraft gets up until all of those forces that govern the earth realm, the clouds, the rain, and all the elemental forces go under it. And once it gets to that place, there is a different feeling. The cloud you used to see when you were on the ground now comes under. You look from the aircraft, you see it under you. This thing I'm telling you is literal in your prayer life. They call it, you pray and pray and pray till you break into this realm of peace. You just have this peace. You pray, you pray till you hit what is called a note of victory. Listen, this is spiritual technology. If you learn this, if you see how powerful you will be. Somebody died, you want to raise him from the dead. Don't just go and make a few statements and say, no, they don't raise the dead from the nature, they raise it from that other place. But you have that place. So the issue now is climb. Everyone say climb. Say so. So as I relate. Actually, sometimes the old time I used to call it push. Pray until something happens. You, you keep going. You keep going. There's a place you get to. A new fresh air start hitting your spirit man. The bodies lift. The stress and that put whatever lifts. You will know when you hear that crime as in, in worship. Do you know? I don't want to borrow the bedroom language for husband and wife because people know when they climb mass. You know, one young girl said to the mother, How will I know when I'm in love? Explain to me what exactly does he feel like? So I will know when I'm in love. He said, I don't need to tell you. When you get there, you will know. He said, eh? He said, When you. When you fall in, he said, you will know. You can deny to your friends, so. But you don't find out, and when you get to him, you're not, you're still thinking about the guy. When he calls you, you are so excited. When people tell you, ah, you deny. When he's coming, you go and check your hair. Look at the mirror, look at other. You start looking at how you appear before you don't care. When you talk with him, you are filled with smile. When you will quarrel, you are so sad. Why are you sad? Some other people will say, I don't care. This one, why are you hurting? Oh, demons in a modern When they, they told Peter Dockers was dead and he got there, found out that that woman was dead, he left the woman alone. Because the faith required for raising the dead is the faith of God. It's not natural human faith. The one you used to believe your boss when he said, I'll increase your salary. That's not the faith that moves mountains. It's supernatural. So he left him and went to the corner and started praying. You can read it in Acts. What he's doing is to hit that zone where the swearing starts. So you pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, the faith of God activates. It's either you activate it before you come. They give you a deaf person. If you are activated, just speak to it, it will open. If you are not activated, leave the man and just pray in the spirit. Get other people around you, pray in the spirit. Pray, just climb, just climb, just climb. Leave, after a while, you leave the traffic, you leave what happened in office behind, you leave all the worries of life, you leave your landlord that is disturbing you about rent, all of this is will go under. You leave, uh, my back was paining me before I came to this house, that back will forget it, he leaves. And then you hit this zone of peace, you hit this zone of serenity, you hit this zone where the body is lived. Then, and, 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 and this is one of the things that happened with that zone. Oh, in the most in a mad and at ah, I worship. The Bible said when the early church hit it, they began to speak forth the wonderful works of God. They were speaking it forth now. That's what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 is saying. Look at what happened. This is a third technology. This is the talk. This is how to stabilize the aircraft. This is now entering the cruising stage. Be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what you are doing before you do it, you do you get to this point, you enter completely into the spirit. 
And then this is what was happening. Verse 19. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. At that moment, worship is no more man doing it. The Holy Spirit takes it up. Your spirit man now flows. When you hit that, you can do anything. Everyone say stabilize. Say enter the cruising stage. Say stabilize. Say cruise. In driving, you don't put the car on that. The car, the car, when you are starting it, you start it. You start with gear one or gear two. The sound is different. Those are the same gears you used to climb mountains. So aircraft, when it's taking off, the sound is different. Sometimes even people inside the aircraft, you'll be hearing this thing is walking. It's, it's, it's contending with gravity. It's trying to beat it. That's praying in tongues. But then you now enter a realm of cruising. This is now flowing in the spirit. And it flows out in form of songs, in form of worship, in form of psalms, in form of prophetic utterances. Ladies and gentlemen, in form of prophetic utterances. Many a time, some of the things you spoke while you are climbing, the interpretation start now coming. They will start floating in, in language you understand through your mouth. You move into the prophetic. You can speak mysteries. You can speak forth the wonderful works of God. You can speak psalms. You don't have to be a music minister. You can speak it. 150 psalms of the Bible. That's how David got them. It's not, let's sit down and do, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. No, no, I think we should change it this way. No, 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 that's not how it works. This thing just flows out of you. That's when you start, you download songs. If it's those who are inclined to songs and music, you start downloading inspirations. You start downloading. You know you've hit that zone. You know you hit it when you sense that realm of peace. You're praying over a child that is on drug. And you are hitting this gravity as you are going. Praying in spirit, praying. But when you hit that note of victory, the body lifts. Don't worry about that child. The only thing you do at cruising stage is thanksgiving. Everyone lift up your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Just give him some thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Say some nice word. Bless him in your own word. Bless him. Speak psalms. You want to sing? Sing. Sometimes you can sing in the spirit at this level. This realm is no more the realm of action. This realm is a realm of victory. I'm not saying thank you, Lord, because it is done. I'm not saying, Lord, thank you, because I've got it. I'm not saying, Lord, thank you. Lord, I have it. Lord, I thank you for it. Habanos, Kemaros. Boroli balamalogo moyege bale Hondoriando ye kayaya Hebaleno senemaluga Your type of tongue changes at this moment Your tongue gains authority Anointing comes upon it There is a new dimension of power in it It's no more the normal tongue for climbing It's not the tongues of fire It's not the tongues of dominion It's not the tongues of authority Aye kabaraba sunenes is now the voice of victory is now the voice of thanksgiving is now the voice of rejoicing joy is your spirit at this point you're praying in the spirit you hit a place where joy hits you sometimes you start laughing in the spirit you might not know why you have hit the zone of cruising you have hit the cruising zone peace flood your heart you have hit the cruising zone you have hit the cruising zone we dead with the blood we're dead to praying in the spirit. This is cruising. This is cruising. Ha ha! You are who you are. You are the great I am. Oh, in the most number the I worship. 
You are who you are. You are the great I am. Oh, in the most in a man, not to I worship. Oh, in the most in a man, not to I worship. Oh, in the most in a man, not to I worship. Pastor Nob, this is what they did on the day of Pentecost. This is what they did. Jesus took care of saints on the cross and came, spent 40 days showing them all of the mysteries of the kingdom. Got the word into them. They got enough well. And I told them, go to the upper room for technology number two, which is prayer. Because you see, before the Holy Spirit came, you can't pray in the spirit. What you do is they that wait upon the Lord. If you get into fasting, if you get into waiting on the Lord, if you get into prayer and stay in the presence of God, you climb again. The same thing, you know, the same thing. Sometimes you don't need fasting. But if you can spend time, time can be exchanged for fast. But it's like a other times you need fasting. There is something about Old Testament and New Testament. Both can get you in, but the technology is a little different. And now, so they started tarrying before God. It took them about 10 days. It took them about 10 days. New Testament will get you there fast, just like aircraft. Can you imagine spending one hour, two hours, three hours just to do climbing? When will you do the flying? Just to climb, we have wasted two hours. I boarded the aircraft this morning. 6.35, sat there till other people finish, 6.40, we rode in the tarmac. When I came out of the aircraft in Lagos, I checked, it was 7.40. It was one hour in tower, but the flying was 15 minutes. So that means the climbing is done between five minutes thereabout. That's why if you do technology number one, the climbing won't be too much. If you don't do technology number one, there will be a lot of struggle in climbing because you have not put the blood where it should be. Get the engine clean before you take it off. Get it cleansed by the blood before you take it off. Lift up your hands. Pray in this way. Some strength things are going on here. You are shifting to a new dimension. It is not just a service thing. You are light because this is a year of acceleration. I came to give you the technology for acceleration. I came to deliver the technology for acceleration. I came to give the technology for acceleration. I came to deliver the technology for acceleration. You are going to gain speed. You are going to gain speed. So much is going to start happening in your life, in your ministry, in your business, in your finances. So much, so much, so much, so much, so much. The supernatural advantage. The supernatural advantage. The supernatural competitive edge. The supernatural advantage. The supernatural advantage. The supernatural advantage. The supernatural advantage. Oh, in the most in a matter not to ever. I worship you. Oh, in the most in a matter not to ever. I worship. Oh, in the most in a matter not to ever. I worship you. Oh, in the most in a matter not to ever. I worship you. Nobody should miss tomorrow's service. Something will so happen, you people will look back to today and tomorrow, and you will wonder. How can God accomplish so much 
in one day, in two days? How can so much shift happen in somebody's life in one day, two days? How can that, a major shift is happening in your life, a major shift, heaven has brought in a shift, a move in dimension. Those that are not married now, you can marry. Those that are struggling financially, now you can move into abundance. Those that are struggling in ministry, now your ministry can explode. Those that are struggling with church growth, now church explosion will hit you. Hey! Financial explosion. Hey! Church explosion. Hey! Business explosion. Hey! Restoration in your families. Hey! Restoration in your health. Hey! Restoration in your marriage. Hey! Restoration in the city. I speak restoration in this city. I command the city to cooperate with you. I command the city to cooperate with you. I command the forces of life to align with you. I command the forces of life to align. 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 Even the forces of disobedience. Align. 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 These are God's children. Take your hand off their business. Take your hand off their families. Take your hand off their health. Take your hand off their spiritual life. Take your hand off anything that concerns them. We we'll put a hedge of power around them. A hedge of protection around them. Satan, these are no fly zone. These are no touch zone. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. These are no fly zone. I declare your life a no fly zone. I declare your family a no fly zone. I declare the churches a no fly zone. I declare your business a no fly zone. I declare your companies a no fly zone. Oh, in the mosin of Madonna Twebu. I worship you. You are who you are. Let's sing it. You're the great. Oh, in the mosin of Madonna Twebu. I worship you. <laughs> I worship you. Oh, the most Hey, I worship you. Hallelujah. When you want to decide the fate of a city, the fate of a territory, the fate of even a nation, you have to hit level three before you can do it. A lot of believers try to do it at level one. It doesn't work. A lot of people try to do it at level two. Climbing, it doesn't work. You have to hit the plane. And when you hit it, you have entered the realm of the anointing. You have entered the realm of the spirit. And now you are like Genesis chapter one, where he said, and the spirit of God moves upon the face of the waters. You are now at the cruising stage. You know when you hit that place in worship, because those of you who are married know where you hit it in sex. Climax is called. I worship you. At that moment now, a lot of believers stop. Those who move in the spirit. They flow in the anointing, feel the joy, experience revelation, experience the prophetic but there's something God did when the Spirit of God began to move. God now looked on the earth where there was problem. Because the Bible said the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. Because the fourth level is now rule. Is dominate. Is transform. That's where you legislate. That's where you can lose and you can bind. That's where you rule by decree. You are no more begging. You are now in the position that Jesus sits. And you can command. 
That's the realm of commanding power. That's the realm where you can create with your words. You can command things and they will happen. It is that realm that once you hit, sicknesses can melt like this. Cripples can melt like this. Cancer can melt like this. Don't deal with cancer at level one. That's why you're having frustration. Don't deal with it at level two. That's why you're having frustration. And that's the last thing we're going to do. I will. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have been elevated. You have been placed on high this morning. Look down now. What are those things that have been disturbing you? It's time to... You see, Pastor, no. This is where domestic airline and uh, just airlines that do basic travel, whether they're international or domestic, is different from Air Force. God did not give us this advantage so we can just be domestic. Because after teaching us Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2, he now talked, brought Ephesians chapter 6 to tell us that we are Air Force. That there are principalities. That there are powers. That there are rulers of the darkness of this world. That they are wicked spirits. These are the things causing the problems you are seeing. Just like in health, you don't see the bacteria, you don't see fungi, you don't see this thing. But they are the things causing the problems that manifest as symptoms. These four classes of forces are the ones manipulating. They can turn husband against wife, turn wife against husband. Ah, it's time to now exercise dominion over that relationship and tell the interfering forces to leave and call your husband head back to order. He will just wake up, his senses are bad. If it was Kayamata that was disturbing him before, the thing will just vanish. If it was love potion, the thing will just vanish. If it is even strange love, because it can just be love, but with a strange woman, the thing will just vanish. He will see the person, the thing will be doing, what are you disturbing me? Quarrel will start. It is from that place you can even say what you can do at that realm. Because now this is the realm of the prophetic. This is the realm where you can uproot. Where you can tear down. Where you can pull down. This is also the realm from where you can establish and plant. You can plant a church when there is no physical church yet. You can call up an apostle or a pastor that will pastor it and lead it to explosion. When there is nobody, you don't even, that church doesn't exist. You cannot call all the people that will feel it, even when there is not even the first service. And when you finish, guess what? This is where you can summon customers. They say that product, nobody has come to buy it two, two years. If you want to know what we know, because dominion belongs to all of God's children. This is how it is done. It's not done in the realm of church. So, step off. This is now dominate. This is now rule. This is now influence. This is now legislate. Now, you don't beg. At this time, there is no begging. You speak. You are now operating like a man in authority. You legislate. You make decrees. You adjudicate and declare sentence like the judge. Because now you are now operating because that, why Jesus gave us that place of sitting at the right hand of the heavenly places is so we can share in his authority and dominion. So we can administer things on earth on his behalf. So we can adjudicate. So we can legislate. So we can enforce the will of God on the earth. We're not begging the devil. I didn't come to Lagos to beg him to leave you. I came here to tell him to leave. And if he stays one second beyond, the forces that will take him out will be shocking to him. He knows. And even the demons know when you accelerate, when you enter that realm, the attitude to you changes. They become afraid that you don't say something. Because once words leave your mouth, angels enforce it immediately. Lift up those hands. Say, I have a rod in my hand. It's a rod of dominion. It's a rod of rulership. From this elevated realm, from this elevated dimension, I legislate, I decree, 
I rule. I reign in Christ. Are there things that need changing you want to change? Are there new things you want to start happening? Call it forth. Are there things you want to stop? Stop it. Are there things you need to bind? Bind it. Are there things you need to manifest? Call it into manifestation. This fourth technology is where you rule and dominate and decide the future of things. Your family, your finances, your ministry, people, and so on and so forth. God told Jeremiah, said, from this realm of the prophetic, I've set the over nations to root out, to uproot, <laughs> to pull down, to tear down. But what you need to know is that you must hit the realm of the prophetic before you can do it. That's why the prophets begin with saying, and the hand of the Lord came upon me. Once you hit level three, you can do and undo. You can undo what the enemy has done. And you can establish what God wants done. So, but sometimes it's not just about binding two. It's about now declaring. For example, I, there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Multitudes of angels rushed into this meeting. And I was listening to some of the announcements. They were making many announcements. Some were dealing with healings. Some were dealing with other things. But I heard one of the ones that was sounding a trumpet, and it was announcing elevations. There are people here that will move into billions and stabilize. And nobody will shake you out of it again. There are people that will move into hundreds of millions and stabilize. And nothing will move you out of it. There are people that will move into tens of millions and stabilize. And nothing will shake you out of it. There are people that will break this one million limit. It has been a problem. You've been struggling. Even when you touch 200,000, 300,000, it can't deal with your problems, your needs in Lagos, your needs in your city. You're going to break that limit. You're going to break that limit. Help has come from above. Have you noticed how the angels talk when a breakthrough happens? They will say, Zachariah, your prayers has been answered. The angels of God asked me to announce to you, your prayers have been answered. Now you are going to conceive and you are going to bring forth a new dimension of oppression, a new dimension of success, a new dimension of business, a new dimension of finances, a new dimension of ministry. You are going to bring forth a new dimension of marriage, a new dimension of peace, a new dimension of health. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. What used to take you a year will start happening in months. What used to take you months will start happening in weeks. Watch from now. All kinds of things are going to start aligning with you. Favor will flow in your direction like no man's business. Breakthroughs will flow in your direction like no man's business. Impossibles are now made possible for you. The obstacles are leveled before you. Heavenly Father, I give the word, let the angels now go and cause it to happen. In the name of Jesus, all the contending forces, all the forces of opposition, all the forces of resistance, they are overthrown by the power of God. We bind you, we command you to stop your works. In the name of Jesus, stop your interferences, stop your interventions. In the name of Jesus, let divine intervention flood everywhere. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Things are going to happen. Things are going to escalate with speed. Let divine intervention flood everywhere. Every life, every family, every life, every family, every ministry, every church. I speak resurrection to your health. 
if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it shall quicken, it shall quicken, it shall quicken your mortal bodies. We release God's quickening power. We release God's quickening power. We release God's quickening power into your physical bodies. We destroy that sickness. We destroy that infirmity. We destroy that attack in the name of Jesus. We destroy that attack in the name of Jesus. We destroy that infirmity. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. You are made whole. You are made whole. You are made whole. In the name of Jesus. You are restored. You are restored. You are restored. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. As a relation service. Two sessions. You will not be the same again. Nothing will be the same again. That wayward child will come back to shape. That husband that is out of alignment will come back under alignment. That wife that is out of order will come back under order. That business that is malfunctioning will come back under order. Everything will accelerate, 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 accelerate. Overtake and recover all. 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 There are some of you within 25 hours, some of you within a week time, some of you within a just short window. That thing that is troubling you, you will look, you find that is no more. It's, in ex it's no more in existence. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. You will look for Pharaoh and Pharaoh is dead. You will look for Pharaoh and Pharaoh is no more. You will look for Pharaoh and Pharaoh is no more. I hear the Lord say, you will look for Pharaoh and Pharaoh is no more. For the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. Lift up your voice and give him praise. This is how. This is what heaven is announcing. This is how celebration will be happening in your family, in your lives, in your businesses. Daughter of Zion. Daughter of Zion, you are my daughter. The Lord said, I should tell you, weep no more. For the voice of weeping and crying has ended in your life. I have come by myself to wipe your tears. A new season of joy and restoration has started for you. You see, listen, my friend. Is this month not me? Eh? But I hear celebration in the spirit. Tell somebody happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. Tell somebody happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. Tell him welcome to a new dimension. 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 Four of you, come close. Just lift your hand. Welcome to a new dimension. Welcome to a new dimension. <laughs>